Hello, good evening and welcome to News 360. I am Portia Gabo. I'm Isa Moni. The headlines for tonight is up next. Oh, this is brought to you by Deluxe Paint, GT Bank, and Piccadilly Biscuits. And also coming up, Central Town District Education Directorate to start prosecuting parents and supervisors who fail to perform their duties. An international news head of Burundian militia accused of atrocities named to lead state broadcaster RTNB. We have details coming up shortly. Do stay with us. And we begin in Kumasi, where the Metropolitan Assembly has begun an exercise to allocate shops in the new Kajitia market to traders. The allocation exercise is to afford the traders an opportunity to inspect the allocated shops and agree to occupy them or otherwise before their final tenancy agreement is issued. A report by Beatrice Piogabra. The allocation is being done for traders who have gone through the required processes of verification, validation and exhibition. An initial 1,350 traders will be given the allocation papers. Kumasi Metropolitan Chief Executive Ose Asibi Entry described the allocation exercise as very necessary for the traders to report of any defects in the shops. The process will also give the traders an opportunity to ask for a different size of shops. It will give them the opportunity to go and have a look at it because you can't allow somebody to pay without looking at it or verifying it. So that is why we have the acceptance in it. We have done with KGTR and we are done with Central Market, but we are working first with the KGTR before we will proceed to the Central Market. After the allocation exercise, the traders will take advantage of the flexible payment schedules and occupy the shops. Traders who went through the validation and verification exercises have been asked to remain patient. The assembly has assured only those who are entitled to the shops will be allocated same. Leaders of the traders who have been waiting for the completion and allocation of shops express gratitude to the assembly. We can see the joyous mood our people are in. It's been almost four years, two weeks now since this journey started. Initially, we were skeptical. Many were doubting that we are not going to get access back to the shop. But thanks be to God, today the first allocation is being done. So we are happy. The traders entreated the assembly to speed up the allocation exercise and handing over of tenancy agreements for them to start business in August. And away from the Ashanti region, the GPRTU has cautioned Trotro drivers against dropping off passengers in the middle of their journey, following concerns raised by some aggrieved passengers. Industrial Relations Officer of the Greater Accra GPRTU, Abbas Ibrahim Moro, asked passengers to report such instances for the necessary action to be taken. A report by Harry Teti Mensa. <laughs> Some passengers lamented over Trotro drivers who dropped them off in the middle of their journey. They described the situation which they say is now rampant as disappointing. Some passengers expressed their frustrations. I am a mechanic. I am a pentem. I got a pass. I am a mechanic. I am in a haste to get spare parts for my job. But they alighted us at Kaneshi and asked us to get another vehicle for our journey. And I could lose something valuable of mine in the course of getting another vehicle. The loaded circle and at a point changed their destination when they got a lot of people going to a particular place. The station managers and GPRTU should help us out. Station, station, for no need GPR to you. For me, drivers, for no back, Kasama, yeah, and Kabebua. Chocho drivers admitted the wrongdoing, but explained why they engage in the practice. Me by Ukraine, a quantum shed and yet the sent me Lulu Circle near Kara, a boom. On this journey, I loaded Circle and Accra and dropped off those who will earn me little income. 
Timbe do a mo mo doors no. Second the doors no. Second price ni e good. For si me do ambe ko. Ne me yakra for na maka. If you feel sakra, they will join. But if you say Kaneshi, they won't join. That's what we say Accra. The law is not allowed us to do that. But the reason why is if the the number of the passenger that you took is not enough to take to Accra, the police people are disturbing us too much. Industrial Relations Officer of Greater Accra GPRTU, Abbas Ibrahim Moro, referring to Article 40 of the GPRTU Constitution, cautioned drivers to desist from such acts and recommended passengers patronize station vehicles. Our relatives end up paying more than what they are supposed to pay. So we don't encourage that, we don't support that system. If our member is being reported to us, what we do is we investigate to ascertain the fact. And when the facts come out, now yes, he really did what he did. If he's supposed to receive any punishment, why not? We have our sanctions in our constitution. He advised that passengers who encounter such action report to GPRTU for necessary action to be taken. And an overage bridge at Prahon in the Dansi South District of the Shanti region is posing risks to commuters plying the new Odubiasi Achimda Road. The Prahon Bridge, currently in a deplorable state, serves the transportation needs of commuters in the Shanti and Eastern regions. Here is Benjamin Edu's report. The weak bridge over the Pra River connects new Edubiasi and surrounding communities within the Adansa South districts in the Ashanti region and parts of the Eastern region. It was constructed in 2002 but has since not seen any rehabilitation. The facility has developed deep structural cracks which has led to drivers fearing the eventual collapse of the bridge. The Queen Mother of New Edubiasi traditional area, Nana Ekuya Ejum II, has appealed for urgent repairs to avoid a disaster. She says economic activities will be halted if the bridge collapses. Ashanti Regional Minister Simon Osemensa, in an interview with TV3, acknowledged the urgency to rehabilitate the bridge. In fact, the situation is quite worrying. Uh, you can see that the bridge is giving up, and if we don't take uh, an any heavy vehicle to use the road, it can collapse. I'm going to take it up. That is why I came with the regional director for feeder roads. And then we will make sure that within the shortest possible time, the bridge is re-awarded on contract, and then maybe a new bridge is erected on it. District Chief Executive for Dance South, Francis Ankuma, says the poor state of the bridge is a major concern to the assembly. For now, heavy-duty vehicles have been banned from using the bridge. Let's now go to the Volta region where the Central Town District Education Directorate says it will, from next academic year, call for the prosecution of parents and supervisors who fail to perform their duties. The Education Director, Henry Kwashi Heavy, says the measure is to curb the dwindling performance in the BEC in the district. The Central Tong District has 48 junior high schools. Existing records show that in 2017, the district scored 27.5% at the BEC. The figure dropped to 15% in 2018. It, there are a lot of factors that contribute to poor performance. Parents are no longer interested in whatever their children do. They have to take how the children use their times seriously. They should prevent them from attending funerals because they are not aged. The district assembly is coming out with a bylaw to regulate the activities of these spinners. But I think the parents can do more. The spinners are in their businesses. Funeral people will go in for the spinners. And we cannot stop them from playing the spinning. But parents must take it as a responsibility to ensure that they regulate how their children use their time. Circuit supervisors with the district education office did not conduct monitoring and supervision claiming logistical challenges. This was corroborated by the head teacher at the Jaguko Basic School. The former situation was bad. Once a term before you can get a CS visiting you. Central Tong District Education Director Henry Kwashi Heavy blamed teachers for not living up to their task. He said teachers abandon classes for their private businesses while others go to school drunk. 
Just last two weeks, or is it last week, we lost two. Earlier on, there was one that died. Uh -huh. I will not mention names so that they take me on, but it is an undeniable fact that they died as a result of drinking. I will say it. Teachers get to school drunk. They are not able to deliver at all, or they are even not able uh, to, to go to the school at all. So they will stay in the house and then be doing whatever they like. And the children will be in the classroom waiting for them. They will never turn up. So it affects contact hours. We will drag them before the disciplinary committee so that whatever measures uh, are taken against them from the top, we have done our part. The Education Office says it would commence enforcing the Education Act 2008, which makes provision for authorities to drag recalcitrant parents before Social Protection Committee of the Assembly. We are going to enforce the 2008 Education Act by arranging parents of children who don't go to school before the Social Protection Committee of the District Assembly. They will go there and then they will agree that I will make sure that my child will go to school. If during the follow-up it is revealed that the children are not coming to the school, then we will take the parents to court. In fact, we are empowered by the uh, 2008 Education Act to do that, and that we intend to do. Central Tongue would require stakeholders' commitments and logistics to improve the level of education in the area. And work has resumed on the 60-bed Tepa District Hospital in the Shanti region after stalling for more than two years. Ibrahim Abubakar reports contractors are hopeful of completion and handing over of the project before March 2020. The Tapa District Hospital is one of the six hospital projects in the Ashanti region whose construction has been abandoned for almost three years. The project was started under the Eswal Mahama administration, but halted due to what contractors claimed was a high import duty on equipment. The non-completion of the facility continues to put pressure on the existing district hospital. But contractors are back on site claiming the import duty challenge has been resolved. Work is currently about 80% complete. Minister of Health Kuku Ajimamenu told the facility to assess the progress of work. He assured of government's resolve to complete all abandoned health facilities across the country. Probably December they indicated that they will start commissioning and testing and I think that will be good for us. We will come back here in December to spend Christmas here so that we will see installed facility, I mean uh, equipment and then we'll join them in testing and commissioning. Yes. And then we'll come and do proper, proper political commissioning in March. Resident engineer of Fuelgets the Invest, Khalid Hamed, says the project will be handed over for commissioning by March next year. We have finished almost 70% with the construction work. And now we are at the stage to start the, the medical furniture. We have started already for the medical service. Most of the equipment for the medical gases and the theater equipment is delivered already and we start the installation. Kweku Ajma Menu also announced they are to complete an abandoned accident and emergency centre at Ekupong, started by the Member of Parliament for the area. This, he says, will help reduce the burden on the Konfanoche Teaching Hospital. In business this afternoon, kindergarten pupils of the Jabutpo Basic School will no longer learn under harsh conditions. While well, this follows the construction and finishing of a kindergarten block by Vena Natural Mineral Water in partnership with Princess AC Amwa Foundation. For years, pupils of Jabutpo and six adjoining uh, communities Jabupo. in the central town ja districts of the Volta region have been receiving formal education under very harsh conditions. Established over five decades ago, the Jabuko School continues to serve many peoples. Infrastructure and furniture have been a major challenge of the school. The Parent Teacher Association provided some sheds, but this only accommodates class one to six peoples. Cement blocks are used in the absence of kitchen stools. Others have to make do with the bare floor. Head teacher of the school, Geshon Dodoy, admitted the problems have had negative impacts on the school's performance. But now, kindergarten pupils have been relieved of their situation. This is because Verna Natural Mineral Water and Princess Asia Moa Foundation have constructed, furnished, and handed over a new kindergarten block to the school. Verna Natural Mineral Water also provided sanitary facilities with improved water system for use by the school. 
The community also received support for their Gary processing venture. Marketing director for Trillium Company Limited, producers of Verna Natural Mineral Water, Ali Ajami said the project was made possible through consumers' patronage of the brand. Now our next step to continue building uh, three additional blocks and the blocks will be supporting uh, the junior students as well. One for the uh, teachers and two blocks for the students to provide better environment for their studies. On behalf of the Ghanaian Verna consumer, we are giving this to the community. Thank you for supporting us so much. Princess Asia Moa and her father Kofi Moa were delighted their partnership has been able to yield results. Coming to rural poor communities is part of what we do every time and uh, we just feel we should be out there for our people and we shouldn't leave the responsibility on government because government is us. So as part of what we do to raise awareness on issues of national interest, we try also to intervene in our own little way. So uh, we've travel like you know all over Ghana and wherever we see there is a need we do something from sanitation environment, road safety, social development and we are there. Central Tong MP Alexander Hotoje who earlier provided circuit supervisors with motorbikes for monitoring called for proper maintenance culture to ensure the facility lasts. Management of Trillium Company Limited say any bottle of Verna natural mineral water purchased a percentage of the amounts is allocated for addressing rural problems, hence the need to drink Verna when thirsty. And the Holy Trinity Medical Center has organized the sixth edition of the Hepatitis B Education Series. This is to help reduce the plague that Hepatitis B causes. Hepatitis B is a liver infection caused by the Hepatitis B virus HPV. Hepatitis B is transmitted when blood, semen or another blood fluid from a person infected with the Hepatitis B virus enters the body of someone who is not infected. This can happen through sexual contact, sharing needles, syringes or other drug injection equipment or from mother to baby at birth. The disease is 100 times more infectious than HIV. Holy Trinity Medical Center in partnership with Art Farm continues to educate Ghanaians on the scourge of hepatitis B. In Ghana, the prevalence of HBV is estimated to be 12.3%. Dr. Amakundria is a senior physician specialist of St. Dominic Hospital, Wakwetia, and spoke about awareness creation. I think we need to create an awareness, and we need to do a lot of screening, especially at the community level. And even those who get to know that they are positive, what is preventing us from giving them adequate treatment is the cost. For the basic laboratory investigation, you don't need less than 800 Ghana to do those labs. Okay. And even those who require treatment, it's not covered by national health insurance, so they need to buy out of their pocket. And they need about 150 Ghana CDs for a monthly supply of the drugs that they are going to take for a very long time. Okay, because her B is not curable, but we can treat. William Kofi in T is a managing director of Art Farm Ghana Limited, who partnered Holy Trinity Medical Center for the program. The meeting was basically a continuous medical education to support, help remind ourselves of what we do better. You know, as pharmacists, we always available to help in dispensing and management together with our doctors, and also to put protocols in place to streamline the way we manage things. Although there's no cure for hepatitis B, vaccines and drugs have been created to help prevent contraction of HPV and help manage it. Coming up in international news, the head of a Burundian militia accused of atrocities has been named to lead the state broadcaster RTNB, sparking condemnation by human rights groups. Human Rights Watch said the appointment of Eric Inshimirana was a blow to all victims of abuse perpetrated by the 
in Bonirakuri as well as freedom of press in Burundi. The Imbonirakuri has allegedly killed, raped and robbed opposition activists. The government of Burundi has denied allegations of human rights abuse. The Imbonirakuri, the youth wing of the ruling CNDD FDD party, was accused of widespread abuses after violence erupted when President Pierre Nkurunziza controversially sought and won a third term in 2015. Also, China's military has recently carried out air and naval drills along the southeast coast. The defense ministry has said in an announcement that came after Beijing demanded the cancellation of a potential arms seal from the United States to self-rule Taiwan. In a brief statement on Sunday, the ministry described the exercise as routine arrangements in accordance with annual plans for the military. China, which claims self-ruled and democratic Taiwan as its own and views it as a wayward province, had called on the U.S. not to allow Chai to transit there on her overseas tour. In a statement on Sunday, Taiwan's presidential office cited National Security Council Deputy Secretary General Chai Ming-Yen as saying Chai had spoken by telephone with U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi while she was in the U.S. and met with other senators and members of the Congress without naming them. In other international news, according to a leaked memo written by the UK's former ambassador to the US, Donald Trump abandoned the Iran nuclear deal to spite Barack Obama. Sir Kim Daroch described the move as an act of diplomatic vandalism, according to the Mail on Sunday. The paper says the memo was written after the then Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson appealed to the US in 2018 to stick with the nuclear deal. The latest leak came despite the Met Police warning against publication. The Mail on Sunday reports that Sir Kim wrote to Mr. Johnson informing him that Republican President Trump appeared to be abandoning the nuclear deal for personality reasons because the pact had been agreed by his Democrat predecessor, Barack Obama. Under the deal, Iran agreed to limit its sensitive nuclear activities in return for the lifting of crippling economic sanctions. Meanwhile, France's foreign minister, Jean Le Drian, has said Iran's breaching of caps on its uranium enrichment after the United States pulled out of world power's nuclear deal with Tehran was a bad reaction to a bad decision, raising fears of a stumble into war. Tensions have risen as Washington has blamed Iran for several attacks on oil tankers and Tehran shut down a U.S. surveillance drone prompting President Donald Trump to order airstrikes that he called off only minutes before impact. Right, and that will do for this edition of News 360. Remember, there will be more updates on 3news.com. I am Portia Gabo. And I'm Issa Mone. This is a football match coming up between Tunisia. The Carthage Eagles and the Teranga Lions. So we'll see who wins. Hmm. Lion and Eagle fight. <laughs> Stay to TV3.